Is Nano Tyrannus its own genus, or is it just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex? That question has been the subject of many debates over the last several decades, and we still aren't entirely sure. But a new study just released this week says that they know the answer. According to this study, the answer is Nano Tyrannus is its own separate genus. But I and several other people that I know are pretty skeptical. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and I'm not a paleontologist, and I do not have the knowledge to really break down the studies figures and stats and everything like that. So I'm going to be covering the key parts of the study that I think were the important parts and try and break it down and give my opinions on it. So first off, what is Nano Tyrannus? This is a proposed species of small Tyrannosaur that lived alongside the giant Tyrannosaurus Rex in North America. Assuming that the specimen that we have of this proposed species is in fact its proposed species, and it is an adult like it's been hypothesized, this animal only got up to about 16 feet in length and maybe a couple thousand pounds. It was a relatively small Tyrannosaur. Again, that's assuming that it is in fact its own species. Most of the evidence that is generally accepted right now says that this specimen is a juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. So let's break down the study saying why it thinks that Nanotyrannus is its own separate genus. The study starts off by breaking down the diversity of Tyrannosaurs themselves. Basically, the study says that as Tyrannosaurs achieved dominance in the Northern Hemisphere and diversified, we start finding multiple large species of Tyrannosaurs in the same region at the same time. Examples include the Dinosaur Park formation in Canada, with Gorgosaurus and Despletosaurus being found coexisting together, alongside formations in Mongolia suggesting that Tarbosaurus and its smaller cousin Alioramus also lived together. The study then goes on to point out that before the Tyrannosaurs, there were Abelosaurids that were also living together at the same time. Like in North America, there was Marshosaurus, Torvosaurus, Allosaurus, and Ceratosaurus, with Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus, and Allosaurus also living together in Asia and rapidly diversifying. You can even compare that to more recent ecosystems when it comes to mammals. Although mammals are smaller, it's still kind of similar. For example, in North America during the Pleistocene Epoch, there were giant mammalian predators like Smilodon, dire wolves, cave lions, and even cheetahs living alongside one another. Pumas and jaguars as well were also living alongside these big predators, and we even see that today in Asia and Africa with tigers, hyenas, lions, leopards, and cheetahs all living together throughout their environmental range. And before you come at me, yes, lions and tigers do not live together, but lions and tigers live alongside other large predators like hyenas. There's even comparisons in this study to marine environments, especially prehistoric marine environments, like with Megalodon and the giant whale Leviathan living alongside one another. Today we have orcas and great white sharks living alongside one another. And back during the dinosaur age, there were mosasaurs, pliosaurs, ichthyosaurs, all big predators living alongside one another. But when it comes to Tyrannosaurus rex, we're not really seeing another larger predator living alongside it. And the study is pointing this out and saying that that doesn't line up with the overall trend that we see prior to Tyrannosaurus rex and even today. In essence, the study says that Tyrannosaurus rex might have been the largest predator of its time, but it doesn't make sense that it would have been the only large predator for its time. The study then goes on to to point out morphological differences between the skull specimen of the proposed Nano Tyrannus with Tyrannosaurus Rex comparisons and pointing out around 158 differences in between them. I don't have the knowledge or time to really dive into it, but here are some visual comparisons that the study uses to make its case. Here the study is saying that there's a lot of morphological differences between the proposed Nano Tyrannus specimen and Tyrannosaurus Rex specimens that they compared it to that don't really line up with known juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex specimens when comparing to adult specimens. The study says that if this Nano Tyrannus specimen is in fact a juvenile T-Rex, why are we seeing differences that don't really line up with other T-Rex juvenile specimens. Now, a really solid counter, in my opinion, to this is that juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rexes are morphologically really, really different 
to their adult counterparts. I talk about this in a previous video, specifically this video, where I point out that juvenile T-Rexes are long and lanky and seem fast and agile, whereas as adults, they're really robust, really bulky, and built more for power and fighting other large herbivores. Thomas Carr, a paleontologist in 2020, found 1,800 morphological differences between juvenile T-Rexes and their adult counterparts. And the fact that this study only lists 158 morphological differences between their proposed Nanotyrannus specimen and Tyrannosaurus rex specimens Kind of a big red flag there. Basically, there is a huge growth variation in juvenile T-Rexes as they progress into adults that using that excuse with the proposed Nanotyrannus specimen isn't a really good one because there's already vast differences from a juvenile to an adult. The study then looks at the growth rings in specimens of their proposed Nanotyrannus alongside other juvenile T-Rex specimens. The study points out that juvenile T-Rexes grow pretty quickly as they enter the subadult phase as they're bulking up and putting on all the weight to become the giant power predators that they are as adults. And they claim that they don't see a continuing growth rate in their proposed Nanotyrannus specimens. They see growth starting to slow down, indicating that the specimen was reaching adulthood. I can kind of see the reasoning behind this. Looking at Tyrannosaur growth rates on what we understand, T-Rex itself has a really big growth rate as it is the largest of the Tyrannosaurs and really bulks up as it matures. But the problem with with this is that we still need to widely accept a specimen to be a Nanotyrannus specimen that is definitely not a Tyrannosaurus Rex and that Nanotyrannus specimen has to be an adult to really make sure if this is actually what's going on with the specimens that the study used. From what I can tell, that's a pretty simple breakdown of the evidence that the study proposes to support the idea of Nanotyrannus being its own genus. But as I said, I am not a paleontologist and I'm not knowledgeable enough to really look into the details of the study. I can only try and break it down for you guys so you can understand to some degree what the studies trying to say. Now regarding the study itself, I am a little skeptical about its findings for multitudes of reasons. First, it's generally accepted that the Nanotyrannus specimen or proposed Nanotyrannus is not its own genus. It is a juvenile specimen of a Tyrannosaurus rex. But generally accepted evidence doesn't necessarily mean that this is the correct evidence. That's what science is all about, is bringing forth new evidence to either support or refute current beliefs. But that's part of why I'm a little skeptical, because it is generally accepted that Nanotyrannus is just a juvenile T-Rex. Secondly, the strongest argument for me regarding a second smaller Tyrannosaur living alongside Tyrannosaurus Rex is the fact that in previous ecosystems and current ecosystems, there are multiple large predators living together at the same time. As the study points out, Tyrannosaurus Rex being the sole large predator in its environment is kind of the outlier instead of the norm when it comes to these large theropods. But the counter to this argument that I have heard before is that T-Rex, as it grows, as I've already mentioned, shows a vast morphological change from a juvenile to an adult, where the juveniles are small and lanky and fast and agile, whereas the adults are big, powerful, hefty, robust, built for large herbivores. The hypothesis is the juvenile T-Rexes are filling an entirely different niche of their environment, and then they transition into the niche that the adults fill of top predator. And when you look at a juvenile T-Rex versus an adult T-Rex, you can see the support behind that argument that it just fills all the niches of a bigger predator as it grows. Then when it comes to the studies ideas of morphological differences, I've already pointed out that another paleontologist had identified over 1,500, up to 1,800 differences between juveniles and adults when it comes to Tyrannosaurus rex. So just identifying 150 morphological differences doesn't really do a whole lot. All in all, based on the response I have seen from other well-known paleontologists who have looked into this 
idea when studying tyrannosaurs, a lot of them are saying this study doesn't do nearly enough to really point out why the specimen of the proposed nanotyrannus genus is in fact its own separate genus. Thomas Holtz, a virtual lecturer of paleontology at the University of Maryland, says that in order for us to really know for certain, we need an adult nanotyrannus specimen that is definitely not T-Rex or an 11 to 13 year old T-Rex that is not Nanotyrannus. And so far, we haven't found a specimen that fits that criteria to be able to safely and confidently say that Nanotyrannus is its own specimen and species. Now, this isn't to say that these paleontologists don't want Nanotyrannus to be its own genus, it's just that they don't see the evidence there to support that idea. As I said, Tyrannosaurus rex being the sole known large predator in its environment is kind of an outlier for not just Tyrannosaurus, but predators in general when it comes to interpredatory relationships. But until we find more evidence to support the idea that Nanotyrannus is in fact its own genus, the question still remains.